people are like, are you really from the IRS? And I thought, who do they think we're putting out here? Um, we are we are the IRS. We explain what we do. Um, so I think maybe they don't associate that with a real person. Um, but we are real people answering questions. I really think that, you know, in my experience, taxpayers wanted they wanted some additional knowledge. They they wanted to learn. I want them to be empowered to feel better at tax time, to feel more confident at tax time. Someone had written, um, you actually made taxes sound fun. And so I thought, wow, that that real that was really the ultimate endorsement. Welcome to the Good Government Show. I'm your host, Dave Martin, and I'm about to have a conversation with the Internal Revenue Service. Yes, listeners, today you're going to hear about good government from the IRS. You're going to hear from Kristen Deasley. She's a communications liaison, and she does tax outreach and education. So she spends her career explaining how the IRS can help. Really, that's what she does. So here's something I didn't know. The IRS has something called the Taxpayer Bill of Rights. And if you go to irs.gov.gov, you can read them. Kristen discusses one of them, but the last one is called the Right to a Fair and Just Tax System. Now, that's certainly a good place to start. I think if you ask most Americans to name their least favorite government organization, I think the IRS would be on the top of most people's lists. So we here at the Good Government Show thought it'd be interesting to hear from the IRS and how they really try to provide good government. And based on this conversation, they do. Really, they do. Remember, the IRS refunds nearly $270 million a year. So join me in my conversation with the Internal Revenue Service. That's coming up right after the break. The Good Government Show is sponsored by NACO. That's the National Association of Counties. County government is actually the oldest form of government in the United States, and it touches more people directly. Roads, highways, hospitals, schools, recycling, law enforcement, water and sewers. In most of the country, those services are maintained by the county. That's county government. NACO is a nationwide organization that represents all 3,069 counties across the USA. NACO helps county government work better together through things like sharing best practices, because when county government works well, well, that's just good government. Welcome to the Good Government Show. I'm your host, Dave Martin, and I have a very special guest with us today, Ms. Kristen Deasley from the IRS. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, David, for having me and inviting me. Appreciate well, you're, it. You're welcome. This is a little different than what we normally do. Uh, usually we're talking one-on-one with political leaders, but we like to talk about all forms and all aspects of government and how you know government works across the board. So um, it'll be, I hope, an interesting conversation and uh, an interesting conversation about you know some an organization that... Um, Maybe isn't everyone's favorite government organization. So what is your title and what do you actually do with the IRS? So I am a management and program analyst. I work with the tax outreach partnership and education team at IRS. So what we do is provide outreach and education to that what we call the non-tax community. So that would be anyone outside of, you know, the tax professional community, um, you know, the CPAs, enrolled agents, attorneys. Um, we work we work with a variety of organizations to um, share our resources, um, provide outreach and education um, on a variety of tax topics and subjects. We do that through um, a lot of different ways. We provide, you know, we might provide a drop in article. Um, we might, you know, provide social media. Um, you know, you and I met at a face to face event. Um, so we go out right. and do, um, you know, face to face events with our partners. We also host our own events. And all of this is in an effort to, again, raise awareness about important tax topics um, and really enhance the interactions that, you know, that people have um, with the IRS and at tax time. Okay. So let's talk about that a little bit. Um, What's the first question everybody wants to know when they approach you or your staff or your team? (laughs) They they want it. You know, it's interesting. They want to know if I if I really work for the IRS. <laughs> and I, I think that's interesting because they, 
they're taking Why a back. Why would you make that up? Yeah, um, it, it's really interesting. This has happened at several recent events where people are like, are you really from the IRS? And I thought, who do they think we're putting out here? Uh, right. we, are, we are the IRS. We explain what we do. Um, so I think maybe they don't associate that with a real person. Um, but we are real people answering questions out there um, at, at our events and and certainly doing what we can to, to help, you know, really help people find answers to resolve their tax issues or their tax questions. So that is it's that's really one of the first questions is, you know. Are you you, you for real? (laughs) Are you for Mm -hmm. real? Are you for real? Um, Okay. So I guess the IRS is probably everyone's least favorite government agency. Is that fair? I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. You know, I I guess I don't think of it that way. Um, Is there there a federal agency that you really can't stand other than your own? Uh, uh, taking your own out? No? Okay. You're okay with land management? No. Uh, no issues with Department of Commerce? Coast Guard, they treat you fine? No problems there? Okay, good. Nope. Um, nope. 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 What do people, <laughs> when people come up to you, what do they want to know other than, you know, are you for real? Um, what do they want to know? What are they, what are they asking? It, it really, it really depends on where we are at any given time. Um, sometimes we're interfacing with small business owners. Sometimes we are, you know, they're individual taxpayers that don't don't operate a small business. So, you know, maybe they have questions about, you know, why they had a balance, you know, due for that year or, you know, they they had a large refund or, or whatever. Um, I think um, really they, you know, it's going to really depend on what audience were were in touch with that day. Um, and that's the thing when you are at an outreach and education event, um, you never know what people are going to ask. So, you know, you really have to be, <laughs> you're, you're prepared to, you know, really address everything. You know, we're always ready to, you know, we're always ready to research and, and provide what we can at the event. And, and if we can't answer it, then we, you know, make every effort to to follow up and, and get it answered and and elevate feedback. You know, we do ask for feedback at our events and um, we want to with that feedback, of course, the the goal is to improve our service to our, our taxpayers, our partners that we work with. You mentioned that we met at an in-person event. It was the National Association of Counties uh, Legislative Conference in Washington, D.C. Um, you had a booth. You were set up uh, over there in the corner. Um, just curious at that event, um, who who talked to you and what were they talking about? Do you recall? I- you know, again, it's uh, there's it, there's just a variety of topics. I think one of the things that came up is the interest in, you know, some, you know, leaders, um, some local leaders um, from the communities that we were that we were speaking with, they wanted to do some local outreach in their communities relating to tax topics. They really felt like we could raise awareness, um, you know, about um, refundable credits and, and, you know, topics like uh, the earned income tax credit, the child tax credit, um, you know, even um, some tax security issues, you know, t- you know, educating taxpayers about tax scams and things like that. Um, you know, we were talking about the identity protection um, pin, um, which is something that can really help a taxpayer um, guard against identity theft. Um, So that's those are things that we were talking about. So really, um, you know, there was a there was interest in doing some local outreach. And my job is to connect them with one of our other functions at at the service that can actually perform, um, you know, more local outreach, um, you know, at that level. And so that was a big part of it. And that was a great outcome to, you know, to have that interest. Um, We were also providing them with some resources to help spread the word in their communities about these things that we're talking about. So, um, you know, we generally try to bring, you know, things to our event that are, you know, Maybe they're new initiatives, um, you know, they're new tax topics to the public. We try to, you know, provide them information, you know, in a format that's easy to understand, um, you know, whether it, it could be an e-poster with a QR code, um, you know, that links to more information. And sometimes, uh, you know, a lot of our products now, they're they are they're in a multilingual format so they could get it in multiple languages, which is good depending on, you know, the community and the, and the needs there. Are there folks like you throughout the country that are available to attend 
town halls, town meetings, um, uh, seminars. Yes. That, that can, okay. That, that yes. do that. Yes. Yes. And, and really, you know, that's, so at, at that particular event, you know, my job is to really help you navigate who is that person, because it okay. may vary, obviously, um, depending on what area we're talking about. So, um, but I, that's one thing that I do regularly. If it's not something that I can do, then I'll try to connect that, that individual with that you know, with that person um, or that, you know, that area at IRS. So the IRS is, is got a full staff of people that are standing by ready to um, attend local events and explain tax code uh, collections, how they work, how to fill out the forms, what 9A means as opposed to 9B. That's 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 a mission. Yes. To, you know, we I mean, we're out there trying to, you know, educate um, taxpayers about their tax responsibilities. Um, so, yes, that is something that I don't know if if taxpayers have a lot of awareness about that until we're out. Right. And then they ask I, the question, are you really <laughs> are you really the IRS? I, I, well, I certainly <laughs> didn't. And when I saw you there, I was like, oh, my gosh, what a great idea to get the IRS on the show to talk about how they're delivering good government. Do you feel like you're delivering? Do you feel like this is good government at its finest? Yeah, you know, I do. Um, I I feel very strongly about it. Um, I started out as a revenue agent, um, which, you know, is the examination function and, you know, sitting across the table from a taxpayer and and seeing how I think how nervous um, they could be and uneasy they were, you know, coming into an examination and, you know, really helping to, you know, break that down and, and make them feel more confident and, um, you know, give them, you know, some education even in that process to um, feel better again about those interactions and, and, you know, at tax time and, you know, in these situations um, such as an examination. And that's really what inspired me to want to come over to outreach and education because I really I really think that, you know, in my experience, taxpayers wanted they wanted some additional knowledge. They they wanted to learn. Um, and so I would share publications with them and, and, you know, and certainly they would be very open to learning more about, you know, particular expenses and, and deductions uh, available to them and, and credits. But it was, you know, it really grew my, my interest in the job really grew out of that experience. Um, and I've really enjoyed it because I, I think people do want to be empowered with that information. So what happens when you're, when you're at a party and you meet someone you've never met before and they say, what do you do? Uh, do you say, I work at Treasury? Do you say, I work at the IRS? And what's the reaction? You know what? I Well, I, I work in outreach and education, and so I explain that. So I'll <laughs> tell them. And oftentimes it's that same, you know, it's that same response that they're very surprised that, wow, I didn't know that, you know, I didn't know that uh, a function like that existed. Um you know, and so I think generally it's well received. Okay, um, good. <laughs> very well received. My life is good. <laughs> yeah. And then a yeah. lot of times people will ask, people will ask questions and, and share their stories. So, yeah. Okay. Good, so, good and bad. And, good and bad. Yeah. And, do they, and I'll help them try to navigate through those, you know, through well, those questions. <laughs> what's your background? Were you, were you, uh, were you an accountant? Were you a, a tax preparer? Were you a... Uh, uh, a police investigator. How did you get into this? <laughs> um, I actually do. Um, I have. I have an. I have a education. My educational background is in um, both in accounting and communications. Okay. Um, I also worked in um, social services um, at one time. So yeah, I have a. You know, I have a. It's a. It's. It's a, maybe a different background. I haven't. You know, a pretty extensive background before I got to the IRS. So, oh, and how long yeah. have you been with the IRS? Um, I think it's 18 years. Oh, okay. I'm All not right. mistaken. Quite some yeah. time. Am I losing count? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's a good thing, right? And that time, time flies when you have good, good. good it, it does. Good you, you know the old adage, right? Yes. yes. <laughs> um, well, I mean, when people come up to you, um, are they automatically angry? Because, you know, look, let's, you know, the IRS... The, the function of the IRS is to collect taxes. Nobody likes to give anybody, give away their money. Um, how do you overcome that, you know, initial, uh, you took my money? 
Well, again, there are so many issues that that taxpayers will ask about. I really think that, you know, it comes down to being really a good listener. Um, you know, if I if I can gauge, you know, what the the issue is, then I'll explain to them, you know, I'm here to help you navigate, um, you know, the IRS and and help you find, you know, some help. I think most of the time when, you know, I can explain that and just I think really in this job, it involves being a great listener. Um, most people, they, you know, they want they want someone to hear their they want someone to hear that that pain point um, to listen to that pain point. And then, you know, we can work through resolving it. But I really think listening skills, you know, in in this job, you know, at, at these events and, and of course, you know, even in the office when you're listening to someone over the phone, whatnot, um, and in a virtual meeting, it really, you know, I think listening skills are so, so important. Will the IRS I, tell you how to not pay more taxes? The Well, <laughs> what I, I would say is, is that um, we, you know, the IRS, um, and that's one of the things that I think I, I wanted to talk about, um, you know, is and mention, I, I figured it would probably come up is the Taxpayer Bill of Rights. So um, the Taxpayer Bill of Rights is a cornerstone document that highlights the 10 fundamental rights of taxpayers. One of those um, <laughs> is the right to pay no more than the correct amount of tax. So what that means is taxpayers have the right to pay only in the amount of tax due, including interest and penalties, and to have the IRS apply all payments properly. But again, no more than the correct amount of tax. And, you know, so I another way to address your question is from an outreach and education standpoint, we are out there trying to raise awareness about available credits and deductions. That's what we're out there doing. So I think that you know, from an outreach and education standpoint, that is that is our goal. We want we want taxpayers to be aware of those things. They may increase a family's economic mobility um, when we talk about things like the earned income tax credit and the child tax credit and so forth. So that is something we are we actively do. I'm sure that the IRS won't fill out your taxes for you. But could any citizen who wanted to contact their, you know, local IRS office or your national IRS person and sit down with someone and go through their their taxes, go through their their payments? Like, how does this, you know, how do I pay this? How do I pay that? How do I structure my returns? Well, there are I mean, there are definitely, um, you know, there's a few there's a few different um, topics there. Um you know, on the website, um, it's easy to access. You will find um, access to free tax help, okay. um, free tax, you know, preparation through VITA. Um, I think a lot of a lot of people are probably familiar with that with that program um, and, and free file, which is another option uh, for free tax preparation. Um, but I would also say, you know, you mentioned it. So I wanted to you know, I wanted to bring it up is that um, what's happening, um, what has been happening um, recently, um, and I wanted to mention is that taxpayers, two taxpayers, that many IRS taxpayer assistance centers across the country have actually, um, they've been open um, on one Saturday each month in February, March, as well as April. Um, and that will also be, they will also be open in May. They will also be open on May 13th um, from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. And that's to offer in-person help without an appointment. Normally, those taxpayers assistance centers are open weekdays by appointment. Okay. So um, that's, again, if someone has questions about a tax bill, an IRS audit, or, or they need help resolving a tax problem, they'll receive assistance from IRS employees specializing in those services. Um, you know, if they're, those employees aren't available, then the individual will receive a referral for additional help 
um, on these services. Um, um, IRS taxpayer advocate service uh, employees may be available also to help with some issues. Um, I also, because you've asked, I also want to point out a couple things about this is yes, that um, professional foreign language interpretation will be available in many languages um, through an over the phone um, translation service. So also important to note, um, you know, for deaf or hard of hearing individuals who need sign language interpreter service um, services, IRS staff will be will schedule appointments for a later date. Um, alternatively, those individuals can also call TTY, TTD um, to 800-829-4059 to make an appointment. So what was that number again? Um, again um, 800-829-4059. Um, and that is for, um, again, um, you know, that's uh, they can call TTY, TT, uh, T. DD. Sorry. So it sounds, um. <laughs> that, that's okay. So it sounds like there, there really is m multiple ways for citizens to contact the IRS to get answers to questions. Yes. I mean, well, and, and one of, one of the best ways is, you know, one of the easiest ways is to, is to become familiar um, with IRS.gov and use, utilize IRS.gov. So many questions could be answered. And it's interesting because I was recently, I've actually been at two events recently where, you know, taxpayers, they'd come up and, and to my table and, and ask a question and I would show them, you know, where they can actually find that, um, you know, because whether it be an, an example would be a virtual small business workshop that we have, um, you know, they wanted to take a deeper dive. Obviously, when you're when you're across the table from somebody and there's lots of noise around, we don't have time for an extended discussion of a small business topic. Let's say it's something like estimated tax payments. Um, so, you know, I will I'll share with the taxpayer that, hey, you know, we actually have a virtual small business workshop on the website. You can take a deeper dive in, into some topics. And so I'll help them navigate there and explain that they can, you know, they can watch that at their leisure. They can stop and start lessons. And so I really find that, you know, I think people are often surprised. So they're, you know, they're on their mobile device following along right with me. Okay. Just, you know, so that was, it was interesting how, how much we were able to, we were able to resolve on those mobile devices. I thought that was, I thought that was really great. And they found it really easy. Um, so yeah, I think it, it worked really well. Do so people, I, do, I wanted to mention that. After a conversation with you, did people walk away thinking, um, oh, I saved money, that was good. Or, you know, what's the reaction? You know, I think, um, I really do think that, again, I hope it all, it all circles back to, you know, what I said in the beginning of our conversation is that that's what I that's what I hope they walk away with. Um, in my earlier comments, I said I want them to be empowered to feel better at tax time, to feel more confident at tax time um, to, you know, and I ask myself, I would judge my success on you know, have I raised awareness about a particular topic um, that could, you know, a, a credit that could increase, you know, a family's economic mobility? That is, you know, that is important to me. Um, you know, teaching them about tax scams, um, you know, that are out there and, you know, how to safeguard their personal information and, you know, how the IRS communicates with taxpayers. Those things are you know, so important to me. Did I, you know, did I make them, you know, did I, did I help them understand how we would communicate with the taxpayer and how we would not that way when they pick up that phone and, and they hear from a scammer, if that's what it is, or they get an email, they're going to be able to better, you know, to better identify, wait a minute. I know I talked to these people at IRS or I, you know, I got this, you know, I saw this drop in article and this is not the way the IRS communicates with taxpayers. So again, there's that empowerment of I've got the knowledge. I know how IRS communicates. This is not it. They hang up the phone. Um, and obviously there are ways to report. Um, You're making the you IRS know, sound like a well. very user-friendly agency. Well, I, you know, <laughs> I think that there are a lot of answers, you know, I, the topic I was just mentioning on IRS.gov, how to report, you know, scams, um, depending on what type of scam it is, that information is available on the website. Um, you know, that question comes up, you know, in times of disaster, that's another thing, you know, that I wanted to mention is, you know, do they know that there 
there is disaster related tax relief available in their area. And really, overall, it's, you know, can I help them navigate again the IRS and and help you know, help them find their answers to their tax questions and and resolve tax issues. This sounds like very good government on behalf of on the, on the part of the IRS. Um, how do you combat the negative image of the IRS when you meet people? Do you have like a five minute you know gap between you know trying to get over that hump? Uh, and and let them know, you know, some of the positive stuff. Again, it, it goes back to I think really it goes back to to listening. Um, you know, people can come up with their feedback. Um, you know, some people will come up and and they might have a joke. A lot of people surprisingly will want to will want to joke around like, eh, I want to avoid you guys. Like, let me just you know, yeah. or you know, are you tracking me in in some way? Um, you know, they, you know, so they, they start with a joke um, and then they might have a real concern or sometimes, yeah, they they might be a little bit stressed about, you know, a matter. And again, really it's, you know, offering, you, you know, that willingness to, to try to help talk them through that. And the listening I think is really important, um, you know, and, and, you know, sometimes that will require, um, you know, obviously, um, you know, follow up communications with that person. Um, but, you know, just really, I think listening skills are are really the key um, in, in letting them know that, hey, this is this is what we do. You know, this is my job to, to help you understand, you know, your tax responsibilities. And yeah, so I think generally speaking, um, you know, I I I don't have any, I haven't had an experience out there where someone has, <laughs> someone has that we, that we haven't been able to talk through something. I think that's, that's always been the case. To your credit, I'm sure, Krista, to your credit, I'm sure. Um, all right. Well, now it's time at that time in the show where we go right to the questionnaires. Uh, so we have our good government questionnaire, a little different because usually this is directed at, um, elected leaders, but, but we're, we're talking with you today. Um, so, from where you sit in the IRS, define good government overall. What's good government? Again, you know, I, I'm i one function at IRS. I provide outreach, outreach and education. So from where I sit, you know, it's, it's what we discussed earlier. It's really, um, you know, empowering people to feel better at, you know, at tax time in, in my function. So from an outreach and education standpoint is, can I make them, feel less worried, um, you know, at tax time? Can I make them feel more confident? Um, Do they do they feel better prepared? Have I raised awareness um, about tax topics that, again, could improve their economic mobility where they can find free tax help? Um, You know, again, teaching them how to spot these these scams and, you know, um, and, you know, again, raise awareness about all of those different tax topics, I think, um, you know, that to me, and again, the economic mobility is, is a part of that when we talk about the refundable credits. Um, so really, um, I think that's a huge part of it, um, for me is really from an outreach and education standpoint, again, is, you know, raising awareness about, you know, tax topics that impact them. Um, You talked about this a few times, and I I meant to pick up on this a couple of times. Um, Scams. This must have like just the the, the tax scams and the money scams must have just quadrupled um, over the last several years. How does the IRS keep up? Well, you know, I'm not I'm not really in I'm not really in charge of, you know, I'm not working. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm not part of the enforcement efforts there, obviously. But the complaints Um, and the questions about that must be must have multiplied. Well, one of the things, so from an outreach and educate, uh, from an outreach and education standpoint, when we talk about scams, um, I find that when we go out, um, you know, and we talk to taxpayers, people will want to share with me, uh, you know, what's happened to them. Um, So people want to talk about that. So one of the, the, one of the ways from our perspective um, is I encourage them to report those scams. Um, and we talk about the different ways to do that. And so that's really, again, the recognition of the scam is important, but also, you know, taxpayers can be empowered to report those scams. Um, so that is a way that, you know, 
when we talk about, you know, how to, to how to combat those, you know, that is a, a question that comes up is, you know, um, what do I do with this? Well, if this funny is enough, yesterday, since we're talking here and here with the IRS, yesterday I got an email thanking me for my six hundred dollar payment, and it was from a somewhat reputable, um, you know, payment agency. And it had a name and it had a date and it had a check number. And I looked at this and I'm like, what is this? So I sent it to my wife and I said, you, this is nothing you did or anything like that. And she's like, no, it's a scam. What do I do with that? So what I would, you know, what I would recommend, um, because again, what's, what's different, there are different types of scams. So you might've gotten a phone call. Um, I think that's, that's touched, you know, that's touched some people. So what would you, what you would want to do is, and I've shared this many a time is you could go to our report phishing and online scams page on irs.gov and it'll explain the different types of scams, what to do if you receive a suspicious IRS related email, what to do if you receive a suspicious IRS related telephone call, um, how do I verify contact from the IRS? It is such a great, you know, it is such a great um, page um, and, you know, to help again, try to navigate, you know, what, what kind of, what was I touched by and how do I report it? Um, you know, there's there's a, a video on there as well, a short video. So that's what that would be my recommendation for that. It really, you know, it's going to be different depending on obviously what kind of scam we're talking about. All right. So back to the question. Thank you for that. personal. So, tip. so you're going to go out there and, and look yes. at that page, right? Yes, I will. Yes, I will. Because <laughs> um, I know what the IRS go saying. You didn't listen. Um, uh, how, so how do you judge your success by what you do? Um, you know, really, I. I I think as I've explained, you know, in this function, I'm really out there um, (laughs) kind of on the front, the front lines at events, right? Face to face. And and so I ask for and I hear, you know, the candid feedback that, you know, that we've talked about. It could be positive and, you know, they it it could be negative. Um, Most people, again, I think are very surprised at first, as we've talked about, to see us in person um, at events or, you know, it doesn't have to be in person. It could be at a virtual event as well. But generally, I would say they're very appreciative of our presence um, and our willingness to help, um, you know, and and listen. So I would really evaluate, again, my success on, you know, asking them, you know, and, and that's a big part of it. Um, you know, I think a part of a part of communications is, you know, of, of interpersonal communication is really, you know, asking for that feedback and clarifying, did I, did I help answer your question? Um, and a lot of times I'll ask them, do, do you know more than you knew when you <laughs> approached the table? How do you feel about it? You know, um, did they, um, you know, did they feel less stressed or, or less overwhelmed by taxes? I mean, I'll ask those questions and see what they say, because I know, obviously I don't want someone to walk away, you know, feeling confused. I want, you know, I want them to feel better. I want them to for things to be clear. And so I will ask um, I will ask for that feedback. And so that's really, you know, that is a big part of how I judge my success is I'll ask them how do you feel? You know, do you, you, did I answer your question? Um, Do you know where to go to resolve this issue? You know, will you reach out to me if, if you don't resolve it on your own, those are, you know, and then I'll, I'll help them through that. But that's how I would judge my success is, you know, I'm going to ask, um, how do you feel about this? How do you feel about what I've told you? And, 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 you know, and follow up with me after if, if, you know, once you once you've tried to resolve this and and make sure that we, you know, I can follow my my partner through that process. Um, I, it's funny, too, because at a recent event, um, someone actually wrote in the comments. It was a virtual event and someone had written not in the comments, but in the chat. Someone had written, um, you actually made taxes sound fun. And so I thought, <laughs> wow, that wow, that, re- that was really the ultimate endorsement. So, hey, there you go. Um, well, I'm not sure I did that. <laughs> do, do you, do you, well, you did with one person. Do you get thank you notes? Yeah. I mean, you're like, do you get thank you notes? Yeah. Um, you know, I think, again, it it could be a note. It could be a, a thank you at a, you know, at an event for, you know, just, you know, taking time out to, to talk to someone. Um, yeah. I, I, I definitely think that people appreciate that, that we're, we are trying our best out there to, 
to answer questions and 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 help them again and, navigate the IRS. And the IRS is open to pretty much you know any citizen with a question or a concern to reaching out to the IRS, and you're willing to sit down and talk with them. Um, there are different on some level. So, on some level, yeah. Yeah, I mean, there are you know there are different ways to get help. I mean, there there are all kinds of different ways to get help. And as a matter of fact, if you go, I think if I look here, one of the things that you'll find, um, I'm actually looking at IRS.gov right now. I want to do. I wanted to um, take a look at this. Um, you know, you can click on help. Um, at the top of the landing page and there's a let us help you page and it'll talk about, you know, how to access help. Um, you know, so I think that a lot of questions can be answered there. Um, you know, a function like mine, when we work with our external stakeholders, our partners, we will, you know, we'll help navigate as well, um, you know, uh, through the agency. Um, and again, a, a lot of these questions that we're talking about, they can be, you know, these questions can be answered here. Okay. Yeah. I'm, as you were talking, I pulled up my IRS page and the first, you know, the, 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 the biggest uh, typeface says, how can we help you? So I guess, I guess you're trying. Um, <laughs> what's the thing you'd like, what's the most important thing you'd like people to know about the IRS? Um, you know, again, I'm going to take it from my perspective because I don't know if a lot of people you know, I don't know that a, a lot of people know that, you know, we really are out there to, again, try to help people, um, you know, meet, um, you know, and understand their tax responsibilities. Um, you know, I think that's that's really important. Um, so I think from an outreach and education standpoint, um, you know, that, you know, I would love for people to know that, that, that we do exist and we're happy to, you know, partner with organizations, um, you know, to help get that information out. That's a, you know, that's a huge part of what we do is working with our partners um, to raise awareness. Um, you know, they have various ways, they have events, they have, you know, virtual meetings that they do. They have, you know, they might provide and, you know, they might produce an article in their newsletter. Um, they might help us get publications out, you know, to taxpayers about, you know, a particular topic. But, you know, really knowing that, you know, we we are out there, um, you know, trying to raise awareness about, you know, tax topics and, and help them feel more confident about, you know, their, you know, about their interactions, you know, with with the IRS and, and at tax time. So not many people, I would imagine, in this world grow up to say, I want to be an IRS agent when I'm when I'm an adult. I want to I want to go to work for the IRS. What inspired you to uh, first get into public service and what inspired you to join the IRS? You know, I. I, I, or were you that well, one in a million kid who said, I want to be an IRS agent? No, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I really, I, I love the, you know, I love the outreach and education piece. Um, you know, I, I've mentioned, obviously we've talked all about that here, yeah. um, you know, today, because that's where I work at, you know, that's what I work. That's where I work at IRS, but I've also, you know, worked in outreach and education previously and, and I really, you know, I really enjoy that type of work. Um, you know, I think that, you know, I, I really feel strongly about that. If I can empower people with information that they didn't have before and feel better about, you know, an outcome or resolve an issue, then that to me is that, you know, that makes me feel good about the work that I'm doing. I enjoy that type of work. Um, you know, how did you find, how did you find the IRS? Well, remember that I was in a, I remember I told you I had an accounting background, right. so I did be, I did begin in another function. So okay. yes, in examination. So yeah. And it went yeah. Right out of school. Was this the, the, did you start working for the IRS right out of college pretty much? Or did you do other things? First? No, no. <laughs> oh, okay. No. Well, what, what, how did you. Thank, thank you for thinking that I'm that young, but I'm not that young. So thank you. Who is? Uh, <laughs> well, what inspired you to join the IRS? I, I just, I really, I, you did know, I recruit think. You or did you think, oh, that'd be cool. Or did you just see an ad in the paper? How did it come about? You know, I think, I, you know, I honestly, I don't, I don't know if I can think back that far, oh. but that's how I feel today. I think that's what, if I remember, that's what, you know, that's what really drew me, you know, remember that, 
for me, as I mentioned in the beginning, I don't expect you to remember, but I have a communications background right. and I have, you know, an accounting background. Um, so it's great because when you think about it, I'm able to use, you know, I'm able to utilize both of those both of those backgrounds, um, because I, a big part of this job is communicating, whether I'm doing a presentation, um, you know, uh, you know, that certainly, that certainly, um, is enhanced by my communications background, but yet I'm talking about, you know, we're talking about tax topics. So, um, really it's the ability to be able, you know, it's the ability to be able to do that. Um, I'm able to communicate with people, you know, um, provide outreach and education um, in this job. In, in, um, in an area where it's, you know, communication is not always what the first idea people have. Um, do you come from a family of, of folks who worked in public service, who worked in government? No, nope, nope. not at all. You're the only one? <laughs> I think so. I, I think I am, yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, just, you know, it's a, it's a, it is certainly a, you know, look, I think most people wind up in a job and you sort of look back and go, how did I get here? Um, but working for the IRS certainly would be something that no one would probably see in their future immediately. So this is a question we ask of all politicians uh, because it gives them a little chance to talk about their neighborhood. Um, what is your favorite dish in your, in your neighborhood? If I was coming out, we were going to have dinner and talk taxes. Where would you take me? Oh, well, that's easy. You you might not even like this answer, no, but I'm, um, I'm sure it's, uh, depending on uh, your depending on your love of animals, um, uh -huh. because um, honestly, what drives my my choices um, around here is yes. where I can take my my dogs. Um, <laughs> you know, one thing that one thing so that we're going to be outside. We're going to be outside. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So one thing that happened, obviously, you know, when we talk about, you know, the, the COVID-19, you know, um, the pandemic is right. that we saw an increase in the, the dining out options, you Absolutely. know, dining outside. And so um, I think that that has really worked to my advantage because I have two very large dogs and one little one. And so it's really the answer to your question is wherever I can take those animals and dine outside. <laughs> um, now, they would easily tell you their their preference of meals. Okay. Um, they definitely have a they definitely have a preference. But really, that that's what drives it. And it's it's actually rather stressful to have animals dining with you all the time. I'm but, sure. Well, you're you in know. Southern California. We go for seafood. Where, where, where's, your, where's your where's your where's your where's your place? Where's your go to spot? Um, you know, it's interesting. I don't think it's I don't think it's seafood, um, you know, primarily. Okay. Um, you know, it's it's interesting. Um, I think there are, you know, there are a couple different restaurants there. They vary. You know, what's right. what's great for us is that, you know, there's a, a really great Mexican restaurant here that will. I was going you know, to ask about you know, to, Cal Mex. Yeah. OK. Yeah. And, you know, um, you know, and it could be, you know, more American fare, but it, it's really great. I mean, that they're that they're willing to take us. So <laughs> that, it, it, it is. It's it's that really is truly the answer to the question. The dogs are really driving our choice. The dogs are driving your dining. Very good. All right. So we're going to wrap it up with uh, on, a, on, a, on, a, on a good government note. Give me your favorite example of good government provided by the IRS. Um, well, I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you an example of one thing that we're currently trying to do. Sure. Um, and that is, um, back in the fall, um, IRS attempted to contact more than 9 million individuals and families by letter, um, about unclaimed credit. So what our outreach and education team, our outreach team is doing right now, as well as others at IRS, we're continuing to work with our partners um, to get the word out that for low and you know no income eligible individuals and families that um, that normally don't file tax returns, that it's not too late um, to claim pandemic related tax benefits um, that they might not have previously received or claimed through a tax return. Um, and that would be the, you know, things such as the 2021 enhanced child tax credit and the 2020 and 2021 recovery rebate credits for those um, who are eligible and didn't receive the full 2020 or 2021 economic impact payments. So, um, you know, we're out there trying to raise, raise that awareness. Um, and that's really, um, again, that's because 
I think it's important to point out, just put some context around that, that an eligible family of two adults and two young children could receive up to $18,600 in combined refundable credits for 2020 and 2021. Again, that's a lot of money sitting on the table. So we're continuing to look for opportunities to get the word out, you know, to those individuals. So again, the one thing I think I mentioned Vita earlier, the volunteer income tax assistance program can assist those low income and no income taxpayers with free tax preparation and filing to claim these refunds. So that's one thing that I, I definitely I wanted to mention. Well, thank you. Um, did we get through all the things on your list that you wanted to bring out? Yes. Because I, 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 cause I, I'm good. I want to, I want to make sure. Um, no, it, it, uh, it was a, a very enlightening conversation and it's, it sounds like, um, you know, certainly you, um, but the IRS is, is really trying to, um, do the outreach to people to let them know exactly where things stand. And that's, that's good government doing a good job for the citizens. So thanks for that. Thank you. Appreciate it. There you go. You got There you go. You got, you got a thank you note for the good government show. How's that? (laughs) Yay. Yay. All right. (laughs) Thank you. Kristen Deasley. Thank you from the IRS. Thank you for the conversation. Thanks for coming on the show and thank you for your insights. Hopefully some people listened to the show and went, Oh, they're not all bad. (laughs) Thank you. Appreciate that. Kutztown University is a smart choice for Pennsylvania students or students from anywhere looking for an outstanding college experience close to home and in the heart of Pennsylvania. With over 130 majors, KU has endless academic opportunities. Kutztown also offers plenty of on-campus housing, 24-7 dining options, comprehensive support services to ensure our student success, and so much more. Kutztown has 22 NCAA Division II sports teams, and a nationally recognized men's rugby team. How about that? Plus, you get it all with the affordable tuition of a state university. So visit kutztown.edu on the web, kutztown.edu, and see why it's good to be golden. There you go. Good government provided by the Internal Revenue Service. The best place to start getting the IRS working for you is on their website. That's irs.gov, irs.gov. That was a really interesting conversation with Christine Deasley of the IRS. And she had some good insight and good tips about how the IRS really tries to provide good government. And there's more good news on the way. As part of the Inflation Reduction Act, the IRS is getting an $80 billion cash infusion. Part of that will go to making the collection of taxes more fair and to move the IRS to a more digital system. The money is going to be part of a 10-year complete revamp of the IRS. So let's hope we see even more good government from the IRS. Anyway, that's my conversation with the IRS. Join us again right here where you get your podcast for another conversation with someone in government. We'll talk about how government works for all of us. Thanks for listening. I'm Dave Martin. The Good Government Show and a Conversation With is produced by Valley Park Productions. Jim Ludlow, David Martin, and David Snyder are the executive producers. Our editor and producer is Jason Sturchik. This is The Good Government Show. Thanks for listening.